Hello everyone. The title of the message this week is Two Sins. Two Sins. Just got back from our Sunday meeting at the Arcadia Church of God Prophecy. Pastor Danny has been preaching tremendous sessions on I Am Determined. Powerful sermons. A lot of people, from time to time, I'm often asked concerning the message, what is sin? Well, it's not doing the will of God. And we're going to talk about the two sins that there's many other sins, but I'm concentrating on two to bring it out. But want to concentrate on two classes. Remember, sin without forgiveness can bring death. Now, when I was younger, I didn't understand that sin was I going to die right away. Well, what happens is sin can bring separation from God. We see that with Judas. We see that with Saul. And we see that with many others in the Bible that they did not ask for forgiveness of their sins. They went ahead and did things their way. Like the Frank Sinatra song and uh, Elvis Presley, I did it my way. That's fine with God but he's certainly going to sort out the wheat and the tars at the end of our life. So we can do it our way, and from time to time we may find that, well, lightning did strike. As I've often said to people, I can take a piece of steel out and hold it up in the air when it's thunder and lightning. It may get hit with lightning. So the one sin we're going to talk about is our will. Think of a man. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of a man, be it a Christian? Now, I'm talking to Christians here. The fact of the matter is that sinners do not know the Word of God. They do not know Christ. They live in darkness. They've heard of Him, but they don't have a, a relationship with Him. So to them, when we ask them what comes to mind about being a Christian, they would say, well, I keep the Ten Commandments. Well, there's many people that have kept those, and there's illustrations of it in the Bible that has tried to keep those and yet went on to defeat, such as stealing. And the Bible says, I shall not steal. Killing. Killing has two functions here of many, and I want to concentrate on these two. Killing can be a natural person, a human, you and I, not us, but a, 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 another person, that kills another person. Well, that's against a commandment. God said no murderer would enter into the kingdom of heaven. There's also spiritual murder. What is spiritual mother murder? Talking about your brothers and sisters with other Christians or earth, ungodly people, that is spiritual killing, and God will not tolerate it forever. Now, we can run our mouths and talk and do this and that, but when trials and tribulations come, we're like, what's going on here? I'm a Christian. I go to church. I read my Bible, and I pay my tithes and do all of that. Well, are you committing spiritual murder? Or are you committing spiritual murder? adultery. These are things that we do. That is, do you have someone, something, a noun, person, place, or thing in your life that's more precious than Jesus Christ? If so, you're committing spiritual adultery. Now, Paul explains it in Romans that the husband should be of one wife. That is true. He should not have a polygamy. And the analogy there is also that if we put anything before Christ, we are committing spiritual adultery. In other words, we are his bride. The church, you and I, we're the bride. And when we go out and do something that's totally against what the Word of God says, what we know in our hearts is wrong, that's spiritual adultery. It's no different than a man or a woman cheating on their spouse. Lying. 
Down through time, I've seen liars that actually believe their own lies. And they will fight you. That's them. That's not God. God's not a liar. Okay, he's, he's not a liar. So the one sin that we want to talk about is the sin you'll hear on TV from time to time that someone was in a commission of acting in an ungodly way and shooting into a crowd of people. That is very close to the word commit. Okay? So when that person commits those things, he is doing those of his own free will. God did not tell him to shoot into a crowd of people. That's committing a crime. And what it can do is it can go into other actions in our life. Lying, stealing, cheating, as I said before. Whatever we do ourselves that's not in the will of God, that is committing a situation that needs to be addressed with Jesus Christ. You heard people say, I had no intent of hurting that person's feelings. Yes, you did. Your language, my language, gives us away. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, you had an intention. You may commit murder and do other things, as I said. Commit adultery, cheat on your taxes. Whatever you do that is opposed to the Word of God and what He wants us to do, that is commission of a crime that God does not permit. Now, if he wants something to be done, he will ask and direct Satan to do it. God's not the author of confusion. So you probably heard about omission. That means to leave out. That's what's the sin of omission is to leave out. We talked about commission, omission, and we're going to put these together. Simply put, the sin of of omission is failure to do what is the right godly thing. We have a conscience. It's behaving in an unseemly way that's contrary to what our testimony, we may go around and say, boy, I'm a Christian and I go to church and do all these things, but we're behaving like the world. A little drink here for supper, a little lie here, I heard a Christian say, well, it's really not a lie, it's a white lie. That's a lie in itself. The Lord wants us to think about others besides ourselves all the time. He may want us, this morning I felt the need to go and pray for a couple of people in church. And we're going to talk about, if I didn't do that, what is the problem? So I'm going to keep this in mind. So let's say that this morning, which is a fact, the Lord wanted me to go and pray for a couple of individuals. If I didn't do that, that is the sin of omission. I'm leaving out what God wants me to do. I'm saying, well, God, if you ask me again, then I'll know it's you. If you do this fleece that it's got dew on it in the morning, I know it's you. And the next day, if it doesn't have... Uh, do on the on the that I will believe you. We exclude God out. We make that decision ourselves. God does not tell us again to do something and say, "No, I've changed my mind." Somebody says, "What about Eli or uh, Hezekiah?" Could you imagine being a prophet and going into the king's court, into his quarters? There were. Uh, he lived, that king, and his, uh, uh, the, uh, the prophet there said that you're going to die. Set your house in order. Hezekiah turned to the wall and wept. The prophet didn't even get out of the courtyard till the Lord said, I've heard his prayer. That's not changing his mind. That's hearing the prayer of a righteous person. In this case, it was under faith. When we fail to do what God tells us to do, we are neglecting God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. 
we say, well, I, I didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like getting up and doing this, even though I should have. It's like telling your boss you made it, that someone else did the mistake. We see that in the very first beginning of Genesis there where Adam and Eve, Eve said it was the serpent. And Adam said, it's the one that you gave to me. So when we commit sin, that is us neglecting to do the Christian thing. What is a Christian thing? Obeying the commandments of the Lord. What is that? Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, your neighbor as well. Well, that's fine. But what about all the other things we are to do? Again, read the Beatitudes. Gives you some examples of things that we are to do when those things come up. The easiest way to think about the sin of omission is what does God want us to do? Jonah. The Lord told him to go to Nineveh. No, no, no. I'm going to take that out of my life. I don't want to hear that from God. I'm not going to do it. He went, like the old saying, halfway around the world, but God didn't give up on his word. You are going to Nineveh. Those people need repentance. It's just not doing what God wants us to do. Just simply saying no. Consider the commandments Jesus gave his disciples. And then consider the opposite. He gave them commandments to do. And what if they did just the opposite? No, I don't want to do that. In Matthew, we see Jesus saying, repent. Today, People don't want to ask Christ in a lot of cases for forgiveness. Why not? A sin of omission is not repenting. Let me say that again. A sin of omission is not repenting. The Lord tells us to do something. If we don't, we need to repent. Just because we don't want to do it, that doesn't mean it's forgiven. have to answer for that. It's a judgment seat. Chapter 9 of Luke, the, we must identify ourselves and take up our cross daily, not someone else's. And Jesus didn't say, follow the crowd. Go where there's a large number of people at church. He said to follow me, which is follow Jesus. We have a burden to carry a cross for Jesus Christ. We're no better than he was. Of course, we're not, at this point in time, we're not being crucified. But we simply cannot let Satan tell us and get away with it that God wants us to do something and we don't do it. If fear comes into our life, God is not the author of fear. We see in Matthew again, he said, go and make disciples of all nations. He's not only talking to a preacher, a pastor, he's talking to the very one that has asked for forgiveness of their sins. Not sharing the gospel. That's another omission. Someone wants to tell you, well, you know, I don't, abortion is up to the woman. Yes, it's up to the woman, but it's still murder. And for you to sit there and say, I, I don't want to offend them. God have mercy. At the very least, Jesus doesn't like murder, and that's what I consider abortion to that person. And walk away. That's, a, that's the sin of omission, not doing. Commission, all sins are equal. There's no big sin, no little sin, no medium size, and I can pray a three-word prayer here. There, there's... All the sins are the same. It's against God. Romans 6 chapter says the wages of sin is death. What is that? That's separation from God. You may still live. He told Adam and Eve in the day you eat of that fruit that you will surely die. That, they lived quite a number of years after that. He was talking about spiritual separation. The book of James tells us whoever keeps the whole law but if you stumble at one point, you're guilty of breaking it all. There's only one individual that ever fulfilled the law, and that was Jesus Christ. So if we say, well, I keep the Ten Commandments, that's given under the law. You better keep every single one of the laws. 
that Moses instituted within Israel. Not going to happen. Only Jesus did that. So when we say we do something that's in the Old Testament, which God is the same, yesterday, today, and forever, but if we say we do that, then we must keep the whole law. When we say that, we preach on the law, we teach on the law, but we don't live by the law. We live by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not a good idea to take a, a, a weight measurer and measure which sin is worse than the other. It's not going to happen. That will be Jesus. He is the one that is weighed in the balances. He said that there to the king in Daniel's time. You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. If you believe one lie, like I said, you're no different than not keeping the whole law. All sin in the eyes of the Lord separates us from God. He, we still live under his umbrella, but he says, hey, you, you need the saving grace of Jesus before I forget there. In other words, he, what, what I don't know that a lot of people understand, let's say that we commit either sin of omission or commission, whichever you want to choose, just for the sake of discussion. It may be days that the Holy Ghost wants us to repent, ask for forgiveness, and after a while, you know what happens? We can still be a Christian, but our conscience gets seared. Satan says, oh, it wasn't so bad. I mean, you've seen so-and-so do the same thing, and they seem to be shouting, raising their hands. Don't compare your life to another. Here's the sin of omission as well in the book of James, fourth chapter. It's perhaps a clear statement about the sin of omission in Scripture. If anyone, anyone, then, at that moment in time, knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Jesus preached on sin and heaven more than he did anything else, is what I understand. And people today just think I can just live any old way I want to. That's true. They can. They can live the way they want to live. That's what people have told me. I'll live the way I want to live. It's none of your business. That is correct. But it sure is God's business. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans, For I know that good in itself does not dwell in me. There's no good in me. I'm born into the flesh. The flesh. There's no good in the flesh. It fights against God day and night. Good and evil. It's called a sinful nature. That nature, we are born with it, and I want to be very clear, a baby before it knows sin, if it dies, it will still go to heaven. Once a person comes to the understanding of their conscience that it's wrong, it's a sin, that's when the spiritual judging of that individual. So the things we do in the flesh will not will not draw us closer to Jesus. We have to be spiritually reborn, a new heart. So, you know, Paul talked about his sinful nature. He said, I have a desire to do what is good. I desire to do good. I do too. I try with all I do to be good. But you know what? I fail because I'm human. That's no excuse. But thank God he brings it to my attention. We'll be closing here in just a minute. But God cannot, but I cannot carry it out. I want to do good. I try. I try so hard, but I fail. That's because the sin cannot overcome it. So he says, I keep on doing it. I just keep on. And, and have you ever heard the phrase, when will you ever learn? Now there, in my mind, are situations to where Maybe we lose a loved one or whatever the case may be and we get depressed, down, whatever the case may be and God forgives us. Because God forgives us of sin doesn't mean he removes that temptation. Example, 
an alcoholic. God delivers them from alcohol, but at times he will have a desire for that. Somebody said, well, I haven't had a desire for this or that in a lot of years. There are cases where God removes it completely, and then there are cases where God leaves it. 1 John 3rd chapter. If we have material possessions and a brother or sister is in need and the Holy Ghost says, hey, give that person $10, $20 that I have given you. The money in your wallet came from me. And we say, no, I've got I've to go to McDonald's tomorrow. That's a sin of commission and omission together. If anyone has material possessions, and sees a person in need and doesn't give them that, then that's where the sin comes in. If Jesus told us to love others, and we see someone in need and don't care for them, in Christian love, then that's wrong. So I'm going to close there. There's a little more to it, and you know, there's uh, things in Ephesians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 3, Titus, Chapter 3, you know, tells us to avoid foolish things. Colossians, do good in the name of the Lord. Ephesians, obey all things, the Bible. So I pray you've received something from this. Pray for our country. It's in dire need. I was thinking today how God sent the prophets to Israel to warn them they're going to go into captivity. They would be good for a little while, that's in the Old Testament, and then they would just go right back in their old sinful ways. We need to pray that God, that we have a move in this country of, of revival, people getting saved, and that our nation can be restored. He said in Second Chronicles 7.14, I believe a pastor quoted this morning, uh, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter, I'll get it out, 7, read it for yourself. All right, well, good luck. Thank you. God bless.